going to be publishing every single data point that we've ever collected in October uh, at an SPE conference in Denver. Uh, but I'm going to describe to you some of the things that we see. Um, the, the goal that we utilize microsizing and mapping for internally, um, other than, a, other than a, a profitable business, is to better understand hydraulic fracturing. How hydraulic fractures occur. Shales, because of the low permeability and porosity, operate in an environment where you have to connect and touch the rock to produce the gas or oil effectively and economically. So understanding spacing of well bores, how close each individual lateral needs to be relative to each other, and how close each stage of hydraulic fracturing needs to be is very important to economically developing these plays. And that was the reason why we, we made this purchase. So this is a very typical eagle for shale, and this is a very typical plot of, of, of what we see and, and how we interpret. And what you see here is a lot, of, a lot of dots. And what you see is areas where you have very good coverage of the reservoir itself, where we have effectively hydraulically fractured the reservoir. And then you also see subtle areas of, of mixed opportunity, we would say. Areas like right here, where you did not effectively stimulate this particular reservoir. And you also see areas where you stimulated outside of the target zone. The yellow area here is the Eagle for Shale, below the Buddha line, above it, the Austin Chalk. And what you observe here is, is what I would say is, is, is wasted money. The operator overstimulated and stimulated outside of the Eagle for Shale his non target market. So, better understanding that allows that operator to go back and redesign his next completion and his next well. This is every single microseismic event that we've ever mapped in the Barnett Shale. And historically, this is the area, this is one of the fundamental reasons why we, why we did this. This plot takes a little bit of explanation, so I'll describe it. The blue lines here are the deepest known aquifer in that county. And then as you go, the depth, this hard line here, is the well's true vertical depth. And then all the squiggly lines represent all of the microseismic moments that occurred. So there is a large amount of data that's represented here. But what we observe is many thousands of feet between the highest observed microseismic moment, which is the best technology that we have to understand how hydraulic fractures grow, and then its relative distance to the deepest known aquifer in that basin. And, and what I would say is, is you know, microseismic technology is not the most perfect technology in the world. And the day that we have nanotechnology fluids that we can know where every gallon of fluid is going, that's going to be a true breakthrough in this industry. And until that point uh, comes, we're learning as much as we can about how, how stress, subsurface stress, the rock differentials, the laminations of rock occur to limit fracture height growth and better understand it. This is the Marcellus, and we, get a, we certainly get a lot of questions uh, about the Marcellus shale. But this is the exact same plot as you would see. And, and, and again, the relative distance between the, the, the most shallow hydraulic fracturing microseismic uh, event that was measured versus its distance to, to subsurface aquifers. And uh, I'm sure there will be questions about, about fracture height growth, but fundamentally, without getting into the geology and the and the geomechanical stress differences within that. These observations are what we're utilizing every single day to inform an operator on how far away his well should be spaced, how close his well should be spaced uh, within the zone, how close it should be to the Buddha, how close it should, should be to the Austin Chalk to optimize his, his asset. So I wanted to show a couple pictures of kind of what, uh, what this looks like today when we go out to either both do a hydraulic fracture and, and, and perform a microseismic uh, uh, shoot itself. And so this is a well uh, that was completed in June. The next slide shows it a little bit better. And what you see here is the hydraulic fracture spread. So if you haven't seen it before, um, the bulk trucks on the right that are red are the pump trucks that are actually pumping hydraulic fraction fluid. The big gray trucks uh, on the top are, are profit storage uh, devices. Everything else is basically supporting that event. Um, the little white truck that's over here uh, that says pinnacle on the side is hooked up to, to two wells are on this path. So it's two lateral well bores on the same path. So that's a good thing. Pad well drilling is a technology that's really taking off in a lot of different areas and will be the dominant drilling mechanism in this play in the coming years. 
It limits the footprint of all the different pad sites that have to be that have to be created on the landowners sites, and then we just directionally drill out to 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 gain contact and access to the reservoir itself. So I always like showing pictures of of, of these jobs to give people reference to to the physical size scope of what a hydraulic fracture looks like from an equipment perspective. Um, so at this point, I want to uh, I want to I want to move away from basically equal for specific and, and illustrate that with all the different shale plays and, and, and certainly the, the environmental emphasis, Halliburton is actively investing very very uh, very very uh, heavily in new technologies that are lowering our impact on on on, on hydraulic fracturing. I want to describe for you a few of those. So there's a few there's a few aspects of it. Um, we're the first company that's come out with a completely benign fracturing fluid system that's commercially available on the market. And we run it here in the Eagleford Shale, as well as most other shale basins. The problem with a lot of new technologies and chemistries is they tend to be cost prohibitive. So our challenge today is to lower the cost of this so that this particular fluid system becomes the most used fluid system that we have. Um, it's entirely sourced out of the food industry. Every aspect of this fluid system you can find in your refrigerator. Its fundamental aspects are the same concentrations or the same elements that are found in beer and ice cream. So I've tasted it. I haven't swallowed it yet. Um, it doesn't taste very good, um, but it's but it's a it's, it's a very big step forward. Um, we want to ensure as, as as much as possible that the fluid systems that we pump are as benign as as humanly possible. I'm not going to talk much about the chemical scoring index. Um, We've aligned ourselves with uh, uh, with the with the, the, the federal government and, and 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 given them what we classify as Halliburton's chemical scoring index. It's how do we measure the health, safety, and environmental aspects of every single chem uh, chemical that we create, um, and we create a lot of different chemicals. And and the 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 stance of Halliburton today is we will not create a new chemical and commercialize it unless it has lower health, safety, and environmental impact than what it's replacing. And so as we move forward, we're only going to get greener and greener and greener when it comes to our chemistries with a goal of being completely benign. Um, so clean stem, clean stem is, is, is that fluid system. Um, go, go back one slide real quick. Uh, okay, go ahead. Um, so I talked a little bit about uh, a clean stem. I'll just leave it here. Go, go two slides ahead. Um, clean stream is, is a really interesting technology. We bought we, we, we bought and leased this particular technology. It, it is actively being used uh, uh, in the Eagleford Shell uh, today, mostly uh, mostly in DeWitt County. What this is is a complete replacement of chemical biocides. Um, biocides are needed in hydraulic <coughs> fracturing because we use guar, the same material that's found in ketchup, to create a polymer base for for a lot of our fracturing fluid systems. And the problem is, is that in a very warm climate like South Texas, it's uh, bacteria that's, that's openly found in river water and, and, and just organic compounds that are found naturally on the surface, um, they can degrade that polymer. And, and that presents major, major issues to the ability to, to complete a hydraulic frac job. Um, so we use biocides. Well, biocides are, are, are a killing agent. They're, they're intended to, to kill uh, uh, bacteria. And so what we've done is we've licensed this technology, which is a UV light system that completely removes the use of chemical biocides. So we don't have to transport chemical biocides uh, on the roads of Texas or anywhere else. We don't have to have our personnel or any other personnel on location handling uh, um, this particular chemical. And so this, this particular technology is a great technology that we're doing with a stated goal of removing chemical biocides um, from our from our portfolio, we don't want to be a company that handles chemical biocides in the future. 